Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Canadian History in a Nutshell series. Uh, we're going to start off today with a uh, something that took place uh, about 30, it'll be 30 years ago this July. Uh, so uh, for the 30th uh, remembrance of this crisis, let's, we, I decided to take a dive into it. So right here we have the region of Montreal. Montreal is known for being an artistic and creative city. Uh, they're home to one of the best hockey teams in the world, the Montreal Canadiens. Um, but it's also home to a crisis that took place uh, back in the year 1990, summer 1990. So just west of Montreal, there's a small village called Oka. Uh, you might know Oka because Oka is a big producer of Oka cheese. Oka cheese. Uh, but you also but you might, might not know that Oka is also home to uh, one of the uh, most embarrassing moments for the Canadian government and the Quebec government. So uh, just to the west of the town right here, we have the Oka Golf Club and it's surrounded by, uh, and it is surrounded by an area known as the Pines. Now the Pines are an unceded territory of the Bohawk people, an indigenous uh, community. So uh, right here, the Oka Golf Course. Back in the summer of 1990, uh, to the end of 1989, early 1990, the uh, Oka uh, town uh, mayor wanted to expand the golf course to be 18 holes. That would include uh, expanding the golf course into unceded territory of the Mohawk people. Um, the Mohawk people obviously didn't like that too much and they started peaceful protests. However, in the summer of 1990, on July 11th to be specific, um, blockades were set up uh, prior to the July 11th uh, incident. And blockades weren't only set up here in Oka, they were also set up um, in a town just to the south of Montreal called Chateau Guay and uh, Kanawake. Right here we have the Honoré Mercier Bridge. So the Honoré Mercier Bridge uh, links the island of Montreal to the mainland, per se. Um, and what happened was uh, Mohawk supporters and Mohawk from this First Nation, so this is right here, it's this First Nation Reserve, um, and it is uh, primarily home to the Mohawk people. So this bridge was blocked off by the Kanawake people, uh, and it was, there were blockades, there were uh, big mounds of dirt and earth moved onto the bridge. And also they blocked Highway 132, which links Chateau Guay to uh, Kanawake. Uh, so not only did this uh, crisis take place in the town of Oka itself, it also took place uh, about, I'd say, 30 kilometers, 40 kilometers away. Now, uh, prior to July 11th, the protests the protests were peaceful. Nobody was hurting anybody. Nobody was, everything was peaceful. However, on July 11th, the Quebec government and the Cité de Québec, which is the provincial police force in Quebec, decided to put an end to the blockades. And on July 11th, the SQ Cité de Québec uh, stormed the blockades and raided the blockades. In the midst. Uh, tear gas and concussion grenades were thrown out in order to co cause confusion and deter the protesters so that the police could move in. However, uh, instead of it being more uh, less lethal, uh, a gun battle ensued. Uh, and during this gun battle, one soldier around uh, these er this area right here, one soldier was killed. Corporal May uh, was a Surete de Quebec officer and uh, he was killed by the uh, by a Mohawk uh, bullet, it is said. Um, so this uh, really started, kick-started the whole, uh, instead of it being peaceful, now it's an unpeaceful protest and protest was, was getting unruly. So the Quebec government and the Surité, the Surité de Quebec, uh, I will admit, was not the best at handling this. So the Quebec government asked for help from the Canadian Armed Forces. And over 2,500 soldiers, uh, reserve and reg force, were deployed to the Oka area to deter the protesters and to bring order back to the 
um, to bring order back to the uh, protests. So, but that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, not only did the Canadian Armed Forces involvement, not only did it uh, kind of bring the pro give the protesters motivation to keep protesting, um, it also um, it also uh, made the uh, Quebec government look bad because the provincial police force is supposed to take care of these things. Now you're calling in the armed forces. Um, so the armed forces uh, really brings a um, really brings the um, a seriousness to the situation. So then on uh, t August 20th, so August 20th is when uh, the armed forces uh, arrived in Oka, and about 100, uh, 800 soldiers from the Royal 22nd Regiment, uh, the Van Dues, uh, because French, uh, because in French, uh, 22 is Van Deux, so Van Dues, it makes sense. Um, they relieved the SQ on the blockades. And so now the military was face to face with the protesters in this area, again, commonly referred to as the Pines. And during this time, this famous photo was taken. Where you see a young soldier face off against a Mohawk warrior. And now this photo has gone viral and is now a permanent part of Canadian history. So in this area and in the Mohawk area, uh, there were there are Mohawk people that live in this area, especially on the unceded territory. And now the military was on their doorstep, quite literally on their doorstep, as the the uh, the uh, armor personnel carriers and the light armored vehicles were literally quite literally in the driveways of the Mohawk people. However, uh, in this time, on the 29th of August, progress was made. And so we'll go back to where uh, our blockade was on the Honoré Mercier Bridge. Right here, so negotiations were finally complete on the 29th in order to end the blockade on this bridge. So this, uh, so this was a little bit of progress made. So now uh, the 138, the Highway 138, 132 were now open. Uh, in, and to go through uh, Kanawake. Um, however, uh, this was not the end of the road for the uh, protesters and the this crisis in general. Back at Oka, uh, there were uh, more and more Mohawk uh, fighters coming in from the region in order to support their uh, brothers and sisters. So, uh, what there, there, there was not any uh, more people killed per se in the um, in this uh, crisis, but there were more people injured. So right here we have the Kanastake lands. So this is still this is all Mohawk territory as as well. This is still um, all unceded Mohawk territory in this area. And in, Mo in uh, Conestake, there is a center for uh, drug and alcohol addiction. Um, and this is where warriors, women, and children all took refuge uh, to get away from the military and to get away from the, um, the oppression of the Canadian government. Um, but in in a turn of events uh, that is still uh, a, still a shock to the Canadian military and still a shock to a lot of people, um, the women and children emerged from the uh, center, and um, when the military expected them to order uh, to uh, set, surrender in an orderly fashion, um, then uh, that is when chaos broke out. So when they decided to do one last march and one last uh, stand against the military, um, things got violent, very violent, very quick. So in this area, again, uh, we know as the Pines, um, when Wohawk, Mohawk, when Mohawk warriors uh, marched out, 
uh, they some were taken into custody by the Canadian Armed Forces. And then uh, once they were taken into custody uh, for uh, various reasons, uh, they were handed over to the Sûreté Québec. In this uh, time, uh, a number of people were Mohawk people were charged by the Sûreté de Québec. Um, only five of them were convicted of crimes, and then one served time in jail. But also during this confusion, a young, a young 14-year-old uh, woman was stabbed in the chest by a soldier's bayonet. Now, whether it was intentional or not, we don't know. Um, but the gist of the matter is, it happened. Um, to make it matters worse, she was also carrying her four-year-old sister um, and taking care of her while their mother served as a negotiator for the Mohawk people. And now, now we have a new front page incident to take away from the soldier being killed, or the Sûreté de Québec member being killed, to having a uh, young 14-year-old uh, Mohawk person um, injured and stabbed. Now, the resolution, uh, it comes off on a positive note. Um, the expansion for this golf course, the the uh, Oka Golf Course and the new condominium development on the Pines land uh, was ultimately cancelled. Um, and in 2001, the provincial government finally confirmed that the uh, this land was reserved for the Conestake Mohawk people. Um, so, although there was no transfer of land or no uh, preservation or reserve um, uh, established, the land is known and is under the uh, act that it was, the Interim Land-Based Governance Act. Uh, this land is the in the rights to the uh, Mohawk people. Now, another positive note that came out of this crisis is that over here in the uh, nice city of Ottawa, our, our government's capital, our country's capital, uh, in the parliament buildings and where all the um, where all the national committees are established, um, we have uh, what's known as the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples. So their job is to take care and to study. Uh, the traditions and rituals of the Aboriginal people and make sure that the country of Canada can uh, can adhere to some of the uh, Aboriginal people's rights and their religions and rituals. Now, this crisis also made Canadians aware that uh, the Indigenous people did have land and uh, we were part of the force that came and tried to rid the people of their, the indigenous people of their land and the first nations first nations of their land uh, where I'm from here in St. John uh, not too far from me there is um, in, in the, the town of Churro there's a Mi'kmaq community uh, that I know very well um, and it's all about living in harmony with the uh, with the First Nations, and it's really important that we, as um, we as Canadians, can understand that um, we live in harmony. They're just they're here, we're here. We're just gonna work together. Uh, they have their land, we have ours, and that is really what uh, what the Oka crisis uh, triggered. It triggered this uh, this trust that we and that we and the First Nations can live together in harmony, and it made people aware that, yes, they are, they are living here among us, um, and that is 100% okay. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Canadian History Series. Uh, next episode, we will have a, it's still to be determined, but uh, it will be out very soon. So until next time, guys, we will see you later.